Ed Zeller's brain was born on 17th of May 1921, so this year we're celebrating his centenary. He's widely acknowledged as one of the best musicians of the 20th century, let alone one of the best horn players. Uh, and even today, people remark on his astonishing talent and how influential he was on both players and on composers. So I'm in the reading room of the Red House Archive, uh, which contains the archive of the composer Benjamin Britten, and one of Brain's most famous collaborations with a contemporary composer was the Serenade for Tenor, Horn and Strings by Britten, and we'll be looking at that in just a moment. But they actually met uh, the previous year, so the Serenade was written in 1943, they met in 1942, when Dennis Brain was playing the horn in the RAF Orchestra. He was only 21 at the time, uh, and Britten was in his late 20s as well, so those two brilliant and prodigious young musicians met while uh, Britain was producing music for this series of radio programmes called An American in England. He would not long returned from the United States and was writing kind of propaganda programmes that were put out in the middle of the night in this country and late at night in, in America, talking about the situation in the UK. These scores for this radio music are huge. Um, they have to go in our oversized boxes in the archive because they were for such large forces. Uh, so the Aria Orchestra was obviously a, a good size, and Dennis Brain was the first horn in that orchestra. And Britton wrote many years later that he was so uh, intrigued and inspired by this brilliant horn player that he started to write more interesting horn parts into these scores. Um, and it may be that this is one of the extracts he means, which is actually a very poignant and beautiful passage for solo horn, which underpins uh, an account of people having to write to families to say that their sons have been killed. Um, and it's extremely melancholy, and you can imagine that Dennis Brain would have played that absolutely beautifully, and it goes on for quite an extended passage. Warren. To my dearly beloved boy, Donald H. Warren, fighter pilot RAF, on this your 21st birthday. And then came the Serenade in 1943, and Britton writes that although he wrote it for Dennis Brain's particular talents, Brain didn't intervene in the writing of it exactly. However, he does write that his help was invaluable in writing the work, but he was always most cautious in advising any alterations. Passages which seemed impossible, even for his prodigious gifts, were practised over and over again before any modifications were suggested. Such was his respect for a composer's ideas. He, of course, performed the work on many occasions, and for a period it seemed that no one else would ever be able to play it adequately. But as it usually happens when there is a work to play and a master who can play it, others slowly develop the means of playing it too, through his example. And you hear that time and time again, not just from Britain, but from horn players, that Brain just raised the bar, not only of the quality of music, but actually the standards that were then expected of horn players that came after him. The famous prologue and epilogue are marked in the score to be played on natural harmonics, and that's without using the valves, which provide the kind of chromatic scale on the horn. And early critics of the, of the first performances of this thought that it was just out of tune, but it's provided this kind of slightly eerie effect that always comes through in performance in the prologue and the epilogue. Richard Watkins, the horn player, there's a YouTube clip of him playing on Brain's own horn uh, this prologue from the serenade and is visibly moved at being able to do that and to make the, those sounds on his actual French horn. Um, and the rest of the piece is an absolute testament to Brain's virtuosity and just what he could do with his instrument. Britain wrote another piece for him in the 50s, Canticle 3, which later formed part of an evening of music called The Heart of the Matter, which was for tenor, horn and piano. Uh, so he, he was still inspired by him into the 1950s and wrote a prologue to the biography of Dennis Brain that came out in the 1970s, um, full of admiration and full of regret at Dennis Brain's tragically early death on the 1st of September 1957. He was one of Britain's inspirations and Brain's legacy remains inspirational today.